What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and welcome to our next major series here at the Nerd Castle. Today we're going to be playing Child of Light. This is an RPG from Ubisoft that I've been watching for a long time because it has gorgeous, gorgeous artistry and I think I'm going to enjoy it quite a bit. There's no way of telling because this is a blind playthrough, but I would like to welcome you all to it and I hope that we have a good time playing it. I hope it turns out to be as awesome as I've built it up in my mind. And so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and click new game and let's get started with the RPG. I want to show off as much gameplay as we possibly can in this first episode. Difficulty, normal, or hard? I don't really know. I don't know. Meh, flip a coin? I don't know. I have no idea how difficult this game's gonna be, so I've done precisely almost zero research. So I suppose we will figure it out as we go. Child, tuck yourself in bed and let me tell a story of Lemuria. A long-lost kingdom, and a girl born for glory. In Austria was a crown land ruled by a duke. Aurora was his daughter, child of a duchess mysterious, beloved by her father. He raised the girl alone, they were rarely apart, till the duke felt lonely and misplaced his heart. It was the Great Friday before Easter 1895. Players performed for the Duke, his new bride at his side. That night, Aurora went to sleep. The fire burned down low. She caught a chill that spread. Her skin was cold as snow. At dawn, they found her, vacant. Aurora's light gone out. Her father wept and pleaded, but there could be no doubt. For all intents and purposes, Aurora was dead. And yet... Once upon a time, she awoke in a strange land instead. Okay, so it appears as though it's chapter one. I can only guess... Oh, interesting. Okay. Right to the old monastery. Well, the keyboard controls are a little... odd, and so I may actually end up playing this Woods Darker Than Night, Shadows Lost of Light. So I may end up playing this with a controller, but anyways, right now it's got me controlling as WASD, and if we press the up key, it allows you to jump, which is kind of an interesting choice. E allows me to interact with things, as you have no doubt figured out by now by the giant flashing E's. And as of yet, I may actually play the next couple episodes with an Xbox controller or something, just based on the way that it feels thus far. Now, it's only been a couple of seconds, but steady. Only little kids easily scare. Interesting. So there's treasure back there. Can I go up here? Oh, I can. Alright. Well, I'm interested in the treasure. Let me, let me fiddle around with the treasure a little bit because you guys know how I am about shiny bits and bobs. If I can get my hands on them, I'd love to. And plus, battle! You know, we could get into glorious warfare right here with our long-haired princess or whatever she is. I don't know. It said she was a princess or something, right? No, she's the daughter of a duke. I have reading comprehension skills, I promise. That branch looks a bit precarious. I don't want to go out on a limb here if I don't have to. Well then. What does this say? Right to the old monastery. Which appears to be right where we're going. And so let's do this thing. This dream is formed of frigid air. 
Dark spirits fly, I know not where. What is that? Can I fight it? Let's fight it. Let's do some battle. I saw the pictures from the game. She has a badass sword, and I'm ready to whip it out. No. Wake up. Wake up. Nightmare, let me wake. Who spoke? I did. Shake the dew from your eyes. Before mold grows, it's common sense. A firefly that speaks advice? My supper men have been, must have been too dense. Food sounds good, but I'm lost. Ever heard of an aurora? Why, sir, she's me. Both sir and she a split aura? Perhaps you are some kind of flora. Cease your foolishness at once. I am Aurora, I am she. Oh, why didn't she say so? Follow me. A lady waits, hair long as a forest stream, with skin like moths and gleaming eyes. A seer, she'll know the way out of this dream. Okay, so apparently we're following this little Tamagotchi looking guy. Hopefully he doesn't ditch us for a spaceship or anything. Oh, he's got a health bar. Oh, we control him with the mouse. Okay. Well, left click apparently makes him squeeze really hard. Hopefully, I don't know. Oh, there's something moving in the background. Some kind of ant. Cool. I'm really kind of liking the mystique and kind of ambiance of this game. It's kind of really, really interesting. I don't want to fall down there because I don't know what's going to happen. Probably something terrible, although there might be treasure. Like, sometimes, you know, like Mega Man X where you were supposed to fall, like, in the first part to get extra lives? What is tied to these branches? Curious charms, little hands fastened tight. Don't you know? These are wishes. Wishes of light left in darkest night. Follow the orange one to find more bright. Huh. Wishes taste delicious. Have a bite. Wait until I tell father about this night. So what am I... Am I looting like XP or something right now? Oh, they run around on you. Okay. In most cases, that would be a bad thing, and it continues to be a bad thing. You never want somebody to run around on you. Oh, okay, so that's kind of a cool mechanic. I dig it. So basically, you just have to drag over the little light balls to see what you get out of them. The path's right over this tree. But I can't fly there with thee. Trapped. The door is barred. A scepter round a translucent sphere. Clear as glass, the answer. Sir Firefly, ignite your rear. Whoa, I barely know you. <laughs> Do it and I'll show you. Three scepters and a shadow cast. Oh. We have to match the symbols fast. So we hold that to make him glow. Oh, you send a shadow over there. That's kind of cool. That's really unique. So basically, whenever I hold down the mouse, he makes light go out, and then you use the actual shadow from the light in the background to land on the symbol that you need. Very cool. I really like that. That's kind of unique. Sir Firefly, our path is clear. But who would put a door here? Either way, we're gonna walk on through it. Who was she, I wonder? Remove the sword under. Who spoke? Some sort of ghost? The Lady of the Forest, I'm sure of this. Aurora, take the sword of Matildas. Hell yeah, I'm down for some sorting. It feels real, look at it gleam. Run! That thing looks mean. Fortunately, I wield a sword in this dream. So the timeline shows who will act next. Basically, it's the combat system from Grandia, if you ever played that. So we have Act. And then we have Slash. Or Defend. And it has a medium cast time. Let's go for Slash on this first go. And we will select our only enemy to hit him. 
Oh, it's exactly the system from Grandia. Okay. So basically how it works, if you aren't aware, I'll kind of point it out, just in case you never played Grandia back, because Grandia is getting pretty dated at this point. Basically how the battle system or the battle system works is you have the bar right here. When it gets to this point, you can see me moving my little wisp, you get to choose an activity. Just like in Grandia, once you select an activity, every activity has a different amount of time that it takes to complete. And so technically, I don't know if they're going to do this later on, but in Grandia, this bar had like three or four notches after it, and the abilities took longer depending on how powerful they were. We also have potions, which we don't appear to have any of those. And, okay, so we've got party. This is definitely not the time for a party. Let's just go for another slash. Let's do this thing. God, I love it so far. This is so great. 50 XP to our character. Definitely not entirely what I had expected. I hadn't really expected an old school RPG out of this. Like, I had seen the screenshots, and I gotten the feeling that it was definitely an RPG going in that direction, but it's going to be really fun to replay something that's so reminiscent of the past. So we've slashed a woody monster to death. Is that... Okay, so that's going to allow me to pass between... Oh, father. How much farther? Aurora, what's a father? That's simple. I'm his daughter. Oop, another enemy right there. I wonder if you have to avoid them, or... Oh, damn. Okay, so there's some kind of... Nope. Pass between the lairs, and then we'll go this way. Ah, you get... it's like a basic jumping puzzle. Very cool mechanic. I like the way that the Wisp... I don't know what this reminds me of, but we're gonna fight this guy. I was gonna say, having your right hand control the Wisp and your left hand control your character, it reminds me of something. Oh, I put that over him? Oh, okay. So if I hold that, it slows down his cast time, and so it's actually, you have to use both your hands, you have to be somewhat ambidextrous in order to make this work. I wonder, I bet that functions maybe with the trigger on an Xbox controller? Very interesting, though. And that's, of course, probably going to be very important. That's probably going to be a major mechanic later on. Oh, and we can shake XP out of there, too, for a bonus. Oh, all right, so there's a lot of different layers to the combat here. There's going to be things that we can activate with our little wisp. There's going to be various actions we can take place while the enemy's fighting us. So we've leveled up, and we get a skill point. Do I allocate that, perhaps? No? Or does it just go up on its own? Okay, that's cool. Select a new skill for Aurora. Oh, okay, so we've also got kind of a little grid here. So we can do an MP upgrade. Starlight. So let's basically, I'm going to run through each thing with you guys, because I want everybody to be on the same level as me. So our three choices, as far as I can tell... We have Light Ray, a powerful light attack with a 10% chance of killing a targeted dark creature instantly. Light is strong against the dark. It has a very long cast time, but it has 24 spell power, which makes it appear as though it's a little bit stronger than our default attack. On this side, we have Starlight, a flash of light targeting a single dark creature. Light is strong against dark, and its cast time is long. However, it's cheaper than this one, but it deals a little bit less damage. MP upgrade, which increases our maximum MP by one permanently. It's interesting, so it appears as though this path... Actually, all the paths appear to have varying amounts of defense upgrades and things like that. It's one of those things that really, in between episodes, I'll probably sit down and try and chart out which path I want to run down. Because as of right now, I don't want to bore you guys. From what I can tell, this way looks like it has quite a bit of magic defense. And one counterattack node. Ending with a final attack. I find that in games like this, you can really get the best feel for what you're going to get out of it by going in this direction down here. On this side, you get what looks like a lot more physical attributes. Whereas on this side, MP upgrades. And so this appears to be magic defense with like nukes. This way appears to be kind of light magic almost, like a light skirmishing magic combined with a little bit of defense, a little bit of magic defense, and an elevate damage at the end. So you get kind of a buff right there. That might be useful. 35% damage. We don't know how that's going to help us right now at this point in the game, but later on that could be really cool. I'm kind of a melee guy myself, but I'm willing to bet they'll probably give us a character later that does something like that. Just because this character right here doesn't strike me... I don't know. I bet they'll give us some kind of duelist or something later. So I'm actually a little bit interested. Let's hold on to our skill points for now. Or maybe just go the light skirmishing path. 
let's go the light skirmishing path. I think that's what I'm gonna do. We'll go with Starlight. And on this one, we're gonna get Starlight 2, and eventually we'll get the buff that elevates damage. So if we get any other damage dealers, that'll be very, very useful. We also get Starlight All. That's kind of nice. That'll be a multi-target. Do you get Light Ray All? Oh, you do. A 10% chance of killing all dark creatures instantly. That's brutal. I'm gonna go over here. So let's do it. So here we find ourselves at a crossroads right to the old monastery. So it's still pointing us in that direction. Let's hang in there. Let's go to it. Surprise strike. Attack an enemy from behind. Doesn't seem very chivalrous, but you know what? What about from below? No, nope, secret attack didn't work. All right. Well, we're going to go down below. We're going to take the treasure chest, hopefully. Can I jump up right here? Or is that something... Oh, I have to go this way. All right. Well, I can't guarantee we're going to get the sneak attack, and I'm going to try and rush for it. Oh, I messed up. I messed up. It's not the first time it's ever happened here at the Nerd Castle, but I've definitely made a mistake. He's trying to charge us with his head down. Oh, did you see that face in the clouds right there? Let's see if we can get him. So we got ourselves a surprise attack. I'm going to... Oh, we get to start out. Okay, so I'm going to go for a... Let's test out Starlight. And yeah, we're going to go over there. I'm going to try and get the XP out of there. And then let's slow him down slightly. Cool. We got ourselves a healing tonic out of there. We'll play around with that during the next battle. Take a look at it and see what it does. And I've missed my jump, unfortunately. This is going to be a long-running trend in this game. If I had known I was going to do platforming, I probably would have put on some better shoes or something. Oh, that is just lame. Come on. I can do this. I believe. I believe so hard right now. There it is. We made it. And so we've got ourselves another healing tonic. Always something that I would consider to be useful. Unless it's something that we're going to get like from a vendor in like two seconds. I suppose you probably get more XP if you follow that in some kind of... Oh, it's MP and whatnot. Okay. Give you a little bit of MP back. Well, I'll have to pay attention to that a little better. Can I... Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, stop that. Ooh, jumped you. Yeah, sneak attack. That's what happens, punk. Ooh, they tried to come at me hardcore style. Not gonna work, though. We're gonna act first. I don't think I'm gonna use... We'll attack him first. And what we'll do is we'll slow him down. I'm gonna try and get some freebie XP out of here. He's now down after a single strike. I'm gonna maintain my farty focus. If you look at my little blue guy, he looks like he's squeezing so hard. Seems like a good way to give yourself diverticulosis. But you know what? Not gonna think about it. Maybe he's ethereal and he doesn't have to worry about those kind... Oh, there's another one over here. Yeah, I got ourselves two shiny new bushels of balls. And so we've got ourselves another skill point. Awesome. So if we have skill points available, it appears as though we allocate those. I don't know if we're going to be able to get all of these. That's something else to consider. Maybe this is just a detour, and later on in the game, we'll be able to get ourselves all the trees? I don't know. In this case, though, I'm going to focus in one direction, because it always seems like the best thing to specialize in RPGs with individuals before going anywhere else. What does the oculi do? The craft oculi. I assume they'll probably explain this later. Maybe we'll fiddle with it. And so we've got our inventory confessions appear to be something that we're going to be discovering later. I'm not going to mess around too much with all these little behind-the-scenes menu items right now, because I do get the feeling they'll probably explain everything with time. Did we just take a little bath right there? Oh, we did. Funsies. If we make him glow... Oh, he's got a limited amount of glowing available. Okay, so he can only glow for a short while. Oh, you can blind them as well, so let's jump in behind and see if we can... No, I wanted to get him from behind. No. Oh, it did. It allowed it. All right. I am okay with this situation. Let's go ahead and slash at the top individual, and we'll go ahead and stop this one. Last time, we one-shot the guy on the top. Okay, so I can only assume we're going to be able to do it a second time. I'm going to run over there. We'll try and slow him down. All right, we got our cast off first. I'm going to go with... You don't get any type of level up or anything like that by using your spells over and over again, from what I can tell. So we're going to save our MP for later, just in case. And so there it is. Down they go. Nice. Oh, you get a bonus. Okay, so that's why you would do that. But it seems as though the bonus is largely relegated to giving you HP or MP back. And so when we're at full HP and MP, not a whole lot of use for those sorts of things, I don't think. And I lost control of that one. They actually move pretty quickly if you don't keep up with them. Over here, we've got a box that we can move. So we're obviously going to be doing slide puzzles during our time here in Lemuria. So let's push the box to there, up against the wall. And then offer a silent thanks to whoever it is that's been... Is 
he gonna drop on me or something? Oh, chapter two, the Queen of Light. A crow with a top hat. Well, I never disregard anybody with a strong aff help me, Aurora. I never disregard anybody with a strong affinity for cranial accessories in a classy fashion. Can I fight with you? I want to fight with you. Well, I guess I can just kind of drive by and flash him. That's about all the best I can do. And we'll fight this one fair and square, just to kind of see what... I don't. I kind of want to know what damage the enemies are going to be dealing. I'll slow down one of them. And in this case, we're going to go for a slash on the one in the back, since that's not the one that I slowed. I don't think we're going to make it around full turn before this one gets to attack us. But we will finally get to see what kind of damage they're able to let out. With Creeper, he's managed to hit us for two damage. We dropped our crown. Luckily, it is well crafted, so it's not going to have dents or anything like that. We can't be going to the ball with a messed up crown. That's not something that I condone here at the Nerd Castle. We are a castle indeed, which means we have... We like our diadems. That's what it comes down to. And so we've leveled up yet again. And we got a magic potion that time. I wonder what... It appears as though... There's some kind of way across here. I wonder if the spider tries to grab me or something like that. I'm sort of interested about the way the spider mechanic works. Because he's very clearly there for a reason, and yet, at the same time, it kind of... It bears experimentation, I think. It's worth the effort. Especially considering there's a treasure chest over there, and who knows, we might get ourselves like a new sword, or like some armor, or... I don't even know. No, that didn't appear to do it. Can I flash on myself or something? No, it doesn't give me any type of hover ability or anything. What did this say was off to the left? Right to the old monastery. Left to the altar of Matildas. Alright, well let's just continue forward since I'm not really sure what to do with that. Caw, caw. Don't they know? Rocks planted in the ground will not grow. Looks like there's some kind of grave or something over here. Maybe later on we get an ability to talk to animals or something. Wouldn't be outside the ordinary for an adventure like this. I don't mean to like hustle on forward and ignore things, but at the same time, I don't want to spend too much time kind of wasting your guys' time messing around with things that I'm not sure how they work. And it might be a situation in which we mess around for 10 minutes or so and we don't get anything out of it. What does this do? An oculi. Mount oculi on equipment to improve the character's stats. So a rough ruby will add fire damage to our melee attacks. It's strong against earth, but weak against water. Or we can gift it. I wonder if that's for later on we get some kind of... Oh, okay, so you can switch in between your pieces of equipment. Alright. And then on our skills list, obviously, we've got ourselves another level up. I'm going to go with a... I'm going to steal the MP upgrade and the strength upgrade from this tree, and then we're going to keep going. I want to make sure her auto attack is at least passive, because our goal with this character was to make her into a sort of light skirmisher. And so, with that intent in mind, she should have some basic melee skill to get us through as we play the game. Let's back on out of this menu, and then we'll continue adventuring up here. We've grabbed ourselves a little bit more treasure. Mosquito, what do you do, Mosquito, aside from suck my blood? Apparently he's not interested right now. He's not in the mood. He's got a headache or something. Let's go see what this ghost is doing down here. I don't want to miss any XP in this situation. Maybe we can get a sneak attack on a ghost. Nope, no sneak attack because we landed on top. I would actually prefer... Oh, you can gather these while in your turn? That's interesting. Okay, so I'll try and do that in between. So every time we have a turn, I'll try and gather all the freebies that are out here. It may also, since they give you HP and MP, it might be a good idea just to leave them floating until the battle gets raw. Another one of those tactical decisions you may want to consider. I'm going to go slash on her and just see if it one-shots her for future experimental notice. So we've done five damage, and it does not appear to have handled the ghost at all. She's got a cast running, unfortunately. Let's try for a starlight, then. The Dreary Gust. We've taken four damage, and we've been interrupted, which reset our turn. That's really bad. Okay, so let's starlight her and see if we can finish this thing off right now. If there's one thing I go I know, ghosts don't like light or something. I don't know. I've never talked to a ghost and, ah, vulnerable to light for 21 damage. 
Very nice. So they're a little bit more lethal than the previous enemies that we fought. They hit a little bit harder, so we want to be careful about that. Luckily, we'll be able to get a little bit of HP back. Follow my voice through this spooky place? No other choice. Well, let's go topside first. I want to make sure that I got everything that was up top before we go any further. Because the storyline is clearly beckoning us down into that location. So let's jump up on this for a second. We'll jump back up here. God, this game is just gorgeous, is it not? I don't know if you guys agree with me, but just looking at the way that the game portrays itself, the game is an absolute pleasure. It's a treasure to look on just aesthetically. I mean, sometimes people have their doubts about games like this because people, I don't know, people seem to say that artsy games are pretentious, but it's nice to see one that's done very, very nicely, and it's just very good to look at. Well, we can go top side or we can go bottom side. Let's go bottom side first. Oh, what the hell? That scared me, and I turned my character around like an idiot, too. Yeah, this is probably going to sting for a second. We're going to have to use our bush magic in order to get ourselves. So we've taken three damage already. And now we've taken two more. All right, well, that's the punishment you pay for doing something foolish like I did. I'm going to use Starlight on that guy right there since he's new, and we've never come up against him, and give myself a little bit of HP back right here. 14 damage to the gargoyle or whatever it is. I'm going to try and slow him down because the little wood guys don't do as much damage. He's hit us with creeper for 2 damage. Once he gets back to our turn, I'm going to go and let's parlay a little bit more XP. I'm sorry, HP and MP out of there. I'm going to use my act skill to slash the gargoyle and hopefully that takes him out. Down he goes. I'm going to stop the turn of this guy right here. I'm going to only assume that he is an earth elemental. I didn't see it mention anything about plant or anything like that. So some games like to corral... Ooh, well, yep, he is earth elemental. Okay, good. 170 XP out of that fight. Very, very nice. And a potent healing tonic. One with a little bit of extra gin in it or something. Let's grab ourselves some freebie XP and also some extra mana. And then some free treasure. And there it is. The Firefly's Elixir. Let's see what that does right now. So the Firefly Elixir replenishes Igniculus's light meter. Okay, so as you guys may or may not have noticed up here at the top, when I use him to ignite locations, his fart meter goes down so he just doesn't have enough gas to keep it going. We haven't been feeding him enough tubers or something, I don't know, legumes. Anyways, I think this is probably a decent spot to break off this episode. My name is Splattercat. If you're new to the Nerdcastle, thank you for joining me here for an episode of Child of Light, which was developed by Ubisoft Montreal. I look forward to playing this one through with you guys. This is going to be a full series. I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care out there, everybody.